Holy crap! Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! I think... I think we found a worse weapon than the nunchucks! Greetings, I'm Shad, and throughout my life I have seen some dumb made-up weapons, often in fantasy but just in pop culture generally. But the one we're going to look at in this episode right now might take the cake for how astronomically stupid it is. And it's fun doing this because whenever we look at a weapon, sometimes we actually find made up fantasy weapons that have far more practical validity than we might have supposed, like the Crucible Sword from the Doom series. But then also when we take a more practical look at a weapon, we can also find that there's a lot of problems with it, like Thanos' sword from Endgame. And so this one, I don't actually need to look at too much to have known straight off the bat how unbelievably dumb it is. And I gotta thank Mauler and the EFAP crew for bringing this to my attention because I wouldn't have hit my radar if not. But when they saw it, they got such reaction out of it, they're like, they really wanted me to review it. And when they showed me, I really wanted to review it because of how unbelievably dumb this thing is. It is next level dumb. And it is this weapon here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a double, like, because no, like, there are double flails that have two kind of mace heads on chain. This is like a double-ended flail with a mace chain thing on either. <laughs> oh, oh, gosh. My goodness. And so this atrocity actually appears in one of the more recent episodes from the Batwoman TV show, which... It's almost universally agreed of being one of the worst shows ever made. And Mauler, Rags, Fringy and the EFAP guys, they are watching this and getting such fun out of it because it's fallen into that category of being so incredibly dumb that it's hilarious. I think the fact that they could unironically try and show a weapon like this being useful, like a good weapon, shows you how phew, far gone that show is. So I've already been very vocal about the problems and limitations that exist in flails. Check out my video on overappreciated historical weapons, the medieval flail. And in that video, I explain the reasons why I, one, I don't think it was that common, and two, I don't think it was that effective. Now, since that video, Skylgrim has actually done a really great follow-up video showing that, yes, there are some areas in which the flail might have some utility specifically on horseback. And one of the main benefits that you might get out of the flail is hand shock. That way you do this big hit that, you, have you ever hit something with a stick and you get a pain in your hands from the vibration and shock that hits them? Well, having the striking end at the end of a chain or something that's disconnected from the weapon, or connected through a chain, should I say, takes away hand shock. And so that is one kind of thing, but I don't think it fully validates it as a weapon if it just reduces hand shock, because hand shock isn't that huge a problem for weapons that are similar to the, uh, you know, weapon that we're talking about. Like if it's a flail, where the comparison would be a mace. And uh, if you're talking about nunchucks, which I particularly dislike, if you've seen any of my videos recently, you'll know about that, uh, the equivalent being a stick. Hand shock isn't so much of an issue to validate these weapons, but with a flail, it could be if you use them on horseback. Because from on horseback, you could, with the speed of the horse and your swing, that actually increases the momentum of the strike even greater, which could create even a greater problem of hand shock. And also, being on a chain enables you to uh, recover from the hit and keep riding past them. And so, I agree, the flail might have some uses for horseback. I still don't like it, and I still think there are a lot of problems. And one of the interesting things about flails in particular is that a mace generally hits as hard, if not harder. A great YouTube channel called Wushu Engineer actually did tests, load cell tests, where he tested the force, striking force between a flail and a mace. And uh, the mace performed just as well, if not better. The flail, you weren't getting much benefit from it. But anyway, so the flail is, in my opinion, a very imperfect weapon. And then this one wants to double up, like create two. <laughs> and there are so many problems. What, what, let me get into it. For demonstrative purposes, I have made this monstrosity of a thing. Now, not only if this was made better, actually as a, like what they show in the show, is it still a monstrosity, but this is like the mangled inbred version of a stroke, okay? <laughs> like, is that, like this weapon already is horrible. <laughs> Just, <laughs> 
<laughs> we needed something on the edge, so I'm using Bundaberg models. It's just, it works, it works, okay. And this is just to demonstrate some of the issues that would be so prominent. Not only do you have all the issues that exist with flail-like weapons, they would be amplified with a weapon like we see in the, this Batwoman episode. One of the issues with flails is that you can't always control this end. Now that can be mitigated if it was a regular flail and the chain doesn't go as long as the hand, but we actually do see some more historical flails that actually have really long chains, and so there is a way to try and keep it you know, yourself it's safe, and by having a long chain, it could be just swinging it out and just doing more controlled strikes, but that limits the range of strikes that you can already do. Now, for something like this, all right, there's an added problem, and that's controlling where this thing flails when you're flailing this end. And so, if you want to do a big flaily hit, where is this going especially if you do want to do a really big one, like, because on a regular flail, look, I just eat myself again. On a regular flail, there's a way that you can control, hold it out at a distance and do a hit. And you'll find, so if I try and hold this out distance and do a hit, like, where could this end up going, okay? It is, <laughs> I cannot emphasize how stupid this weapon is. <laughs> like, all right, what if we were to, like, even, I'm trying to figure out if you could hit away and not be at danger as this other end. And I do have to be careful because this could actually disconnect and fly and I don't want to hit my camera or my cameraman. <laughs> and so you hit like this and I just hit myself. Again. Oh, I actually don't want to do too much because this is such a unpredictable, legitimately dangerous weapon, which is why it's like, if I try and do any safe strike, because the, the other end, is moving in the opposite direction. So if I want to do an outward strike and try, see, this could fly and literally hit me in the head. And I, this is actually a glass bottle and it's a bit dangerous. It's still a bit dangerous. What, what about like... Uh, <laughs> oh, I cannot emphasize how hard, like, the obvious equivalent, okay, would be maybe a staff that had weights on the end that were connected. That could actually still be a viable weapon. Remarkably enough, like, the classic fantasy double-bladed sword has some practical utility. I've done a full video reviewing that, all right? But the idea that you can just double up any weapon and it'll be like... Because <laughs> one, you think, good weapon, two weapon of good weapon, good... Well, the flail, I don't think, is a good weapon. <laughs> and then they're doubling up a bad weapon, multiplying the issues, not just by... Because, like, seriously, the amount of issues that you have with just a flail by itself is not doubled by adding another flail. It actually increases more problems on top of it. They actually... <laughs> I'm almost having a stroke trying to emphasize how stupid this thing is. Holy crap! Legitimately might be the dumbest uh, made-up weapon that I've ever seen unironically depicted, because some dumb weapons that exist uh, here in pop culture are depicted purposely as being dumb, like the gopher chucks from Kung Pao or something, you know? But no, this one they're actually trying to show is like, it's an intimidating... <laughs> I'm so nervous moving this around, because I move it this way, and I, like, really? Oh. Oh. I'm, like, it, it is so stupid, I'm lost for words. And that really happens. <laughs> I can't. Oh. And so, yeah, like a double bladed sword actually has some utility. I. And it, I've recently done a video on the double head. I, <laughs> the axe that has two blades, you know, double headed axe, but then like, the double sided double headed axe. People are like, if you guys mad, what about this? Because there is a double sided double headed axe, like in, in fantasy. And that is just. Oh, but even that piece of gosh is still better than this. It's like you cannot account for where the back end would go like in, like you would have to maybe hold on to one end and use it as like because interestingly enough th the, the types of flails that actually have more historical validity and are more useful are actually ones that have a long long end okay like, like they're a staff with a flail on the end which is somewhat similar to this and so you can actually you know have a bit of utility out of that but the fact that you would just use it like this like he oh I hit my, oh, oh did did that hit the thing? So I could do that, and it hit me there, and it hit me there. I, 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 gosh. This is really like the unholy combination of paralysis and cancer. I mean, it is, it is something dumb combined with something it dumb, which just multiplies to just, just such great levels that it almost infects your soul. Like, I, the stupidity of this thing almost infects the person using it because of how, oh, my head's hurting. And. Uh, Someone has unironically tried to show it as a useful intimidating 
And with a weapon like this, you're not actually getting any true benefit out of the heavy striking kind of ends being on ropes because as Wushu Engineer you know, found out in his test, it doesn't really increase striking capacity just even on a regular flail. And I don't think you'd ever want to hit full power with this, so hand shock wouldn't be a problem because of the not being able to account for this flailing back end. Like, I'm trying to think of, is there any strike you can actually do where this wouldn't really risk you. Like I'm trying to think if I hit over like this, like that, and I'm not, and I'm trying not to move this, okay? Because as soon as I do something like this, this back end could go anywhere and hit my hands. So you would almost have to use it like this to get a utility. Like using it like this, like we see in this image, is one of the most stupid ways to use a weapon as dumb, like, because every single movement you do, the back end now it has a counter movement, which makes this so dangerous. And so really the only way you could probably use this even but somewhat safely is to not swing around this back end much. And just kind of go hit, hit, hit and stuff. And uh, even then it hit my fingers right there. Holy crap. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I think I think we found a worse weapon than the nunchucks! My whole life has been a lie! I don't know what to do! Like, I, this is worse than the nunchucks! That's... That's it! Whoever designed this... You have done something I thought that was not possible. Look, I'm memeing it up, of course. And I don't, like... Because it... Who in their right mind would ever unironically think good... <laughs> the person who put it in the show, I guess, would un unironically thought, hey, it's a cool weapon. But anyone who's experienced with weapons or combat, I, 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 how could you reach that conclusion? And so, because I almost want to, don't think it's a fair thing to compare it to nunchucks, because who in their right mind would actually say, yeah, I'll use this. But I guess, Batwoman did. <laughs> Oh my goodness! I mean, can you see how astronomically dumb this is? Like, I hope you, I mean, like you really emphasize the point of like it's next level. You know what this is almost like? There's an episode of Roni Kenshin where he's uh, carrying like buckets. It's got like you know one of those old oxen yoke things with a bucket on each end, and he starts to fumble around and spin and hit people. Oh, crap! Stop it! I'm in my feet. I mean, this unholy creation truly can only have come from someone who really has no idea about functional weapons, where they just thought, hey, flail, cool weapon. Not really, but hey, cool weapon, let's, let's do two. What's better than one? Because two things are just composite. No, just like with Thanos's blade. Like, and, and even with Thanos's blade, like an actual proper double-bladed sword, that's not like Thanos's one can be somewhat useful, but Thanos is one of those. Anyway, uh, I had to share that with you and just be astounded. And like, when I say I've seen some dumb, really dumb made up weapons, I mean, I've seen the three bladed sword. Is it from the source? I've never seen this movie, but the, the, the something in the sorcerer, sword in the sorcerer or something like, like and it has this three bladed sword and the blades actually even shoot off for like from the sword. <laughs> and yes, dumb, but shooting a, a blade of a sword from a sword has some practical use for utility that does not, you know, risk yourself. Like, this thing, <laughs> that's what I mean, like this legitimately could be the dumbest made up weapon I've ever seen with the caveat of it being depicted as unironically tough, good, useful, practical. Efficient, intimidating. <laughs> like, can you imagine? But, like, the honest reaction to someone whipping that weapon out would be just like, <laughs> what? What is that? That's like trying to one up someone by saying, I'll show you the best internet browser by whipping out Internet Explorer or something like that. That's like trying to intimidate a skilled swordsman by presenting Ray from the Star Wars sequels. So, yeah, I think we've uh, just had an achievement. We have found perhaps the dumbest pop culture weapon that has ever been unironically depicted in pop culture as an effective weapon. Like, I can't think of anything worse. This is what. And. This is like my whole life. I've been looking at pop culture weapons and to think that we might have actually found it. The king. 
Could there be a weapon that dethrones this as, the, as more stupid? I don't think so. If you do, let me know in the comments below. But wow. Wow. I don't know what to do with my life now.